a YouTube jack of all trades. The common question I get in the shack is uh, that people see the solar system, so they look at the batteries and God, you know, <clears throat> you got a, just a huge mess of wires there. How do you uh, know what to do with them batteries, and how how do you hook it all up, and how how do you make a string of batteries? How did you make that? Well, I'm going to try and answer some of your common questions. Um, some of the stuff that you should know about making a string of batteries. Um, a lot of it's very simple once you uh, get around some of the demystification here, and that's what I'm going to try and do. Now, I may miss something, I may leave something out, and I may not have everything perfectly correct here, but um, I've worked with batteries for a long time in the industry. Um, it's something that I do day in and day out, and these are just things that I've learned over time. And this is how I'm doing it, and this seems to be working very well for me. So, first thing to uh, know is your battery. What kind of battery are you going to use in your string? Um, you need to pick a kind of battery, and you need to stick with that kind of battery. So, there's a couple of kinds out there that you should be familiar with. Uh, one is AGM, absorbed glass mat. One is gel, um, and it's just that. It's a gel electrolyte that is in between the plates. And the third, which is the most common, which is in generally in your car and in most um, larger appliances of you know cars, lawnmowers, things like that, um, is going to be your just typical lead acid battery. Now you have some variations of that same lead acid battery and the gel and the AGM, but um, you have your starting batteries, which are a lead sponge plate. You have your dual purpose batteries that are less of a lead sponge and more of a heavier solid plate and then you have your straight deep cycle batteries that are a solid lead plate or almost solid lead plate much thicker plate uh, there's generally less plates in the battery than say your car starting battery uh, <clears throat> the reason for that is the lead sponge plate has more surface area you have more plates it has the ability to deliver its energy very fast out to the uh, appliance drawing the energy where a deep cycle battery is a little bit different, has less surface area but a thicker, heavier plate. It's designed for a more long, steady draw and a lot more charge cycles. So it can be discharged and recharged a lot of times and you're not going to hurt it nor near. It is what you would say your car battery. If you leave your car battery and you run it dead a couple of times, you're going to have an issue very quickly. Um, a deep cycle battery is designed for that. So, how are we going to pick our batteries? Well, first, the <clears throat> thing we want to look at is we want to make sure that we've got the same kind of battery. Like I said, we want to look at what the part number is or group size. I look at group size on batteries because you'll have a very common group size, say in a marine or a boat application, would be like a group 27 battery or a group 31. Uh, group, group 31 dual purpose battery is a very common battery found in boats. Um, it works in a starting application and in a deep cycle application. Um, it's kind of in between both. It's not the best deep cycle battery, it's not the best starting battery, but it does a little bit of both really well, kind of a jack of all trades. So if you want to take a look at your group size first, to make sure what you're looking for is battery construction type. So once you get your construction type picked with your group size, which is your kind of battery that you're going to use, you want to use all solid lead plate style batteries. So I'm going to pick, say, a you know group 27 straight deep cycle battery, and that battery is going to be you know heavy lead plate. That's what I want to stick with. I don't want to have some starting batteries in my string. I don't want to have some deep cycle batteries in my string. I don't want to have some dual purpose batteries, and I don't want to mix AGM gels and anything else. I want to get just a straight kind of battery and that's what I want to pick and go with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once I have my battery type picked then I need to start testing or interrogating my batteries to find out sorry about that what batteries are going to go in the string. So I've got four batteries here I've picked. Now I've recharged these batteries I've load tested these batteries they load test good so now I've retested again, or excuse me, recharged again, and now these batteries have been sitting for more than 72 hours is the window that I use. A lot of people only use 24 hours. 
I use a 72 hour window for the surface charge to naturally decay off the top of the battery for the battery to get to its true standing voltage. Now if you shut your car off and you go over with a digital volt ohmmeter and you test that battery it may be as high as 13 volts or even higher but if you unhook your battery cable so you don't have a parasitic load and you let that battery sit for 24 or 48 hours 72 is the number I like to use when I'm picking out batteries for a string that are used batteries then <clears throat> once I uh, you let that battery sit and you test it again you're gonna find that you actually have one of these voltages so what we want to do is keep ourselves within a tenth of a volt is what we're shooting for so <clears throat> that will give us an indication of the health of the battery besides it already passing the load test and we know that the cold cranking amps or the the reserve capacity or the um, the load test itself has passed now we're going to look at our standing voltage now I took a standard volt a standing voltage reading from four batteries here which are make-believe and we come up with battery 1 at 12.63, battery 2 at 12.67, battery 3 at 12.51, and battery 4 at 12.74. Now our target voltage is 12.7. That's a 100% fully charged battery, and uh, it's in good health. And it's outside of the 72-hour waiting window. So, now that we've checked our voltages, we can see that battery 3 its voltage is actually standing voltage is low so we know that now this battery probably has sulfation growing on the plates which is probably damaging a cell or we have what I like to call a lazy cell in the battery that cell is aged it's decayed or it's damaged somebody run the battery dead or something happened to the internal construction of the battery something's not quite right so that battery is actually aging. Now the battery may work, the battery may start a vehicle, the battery may be able to be discharged and recharged, but in a string we do not want that because <clears throat> that battery is not going to carry the same load and do the same amount of work that your other batteries are going to do. And what's going to happen is you're going to actually end up damaging your other good batteries and destroying the string of batteries that you have put together by having a bad cell in a battery or a lazy cell or a deteriorated battery a damaged battery of any kind in your string so we want to discard this battery we do not want to use this battery in our string at all so we have three batteries left to use now as you can see the battery voltages don't match perfectly but they're inside our target of one tenth of a volt so if these batteries voltages, excuse me, were in the 12.5 range, I wouldn't use them. There's something wrong. So <clears throat> with some simple knowledge here, we can see right away that we can go get a used battery if it load tests correctly, if the standing voltage is right, if the physical construction of the battery, the amp hour rating, the <clears throat> group size of the battery, the type, everything is correct, the chemistry is right, we can make a string of batteries. Now one thing that I do see people do, and I'm going to end you with this here, is when they make their string of batteries, which you can wire this parallel series, whatever you need to do to get your, your target voltage at the end, is they use substandard cable and ends to hook up their batteries in a string. Now I understand that you're probably using you know, 10 gauge wire or less to hook up your appliances. But when you hook your string together and you've got all these battery cells working together now, many hands make light work and you want to lower the resistance between those cells as much as possible. So you pull evenly across all of the cells when you're removing voltage. To do that, you want to use a very fine copper multi braid. Um, battery cable, preferably like a zero gauge, an aught gauge cable, heavy duty cable, a heavy copper bus bar, something that's going to have very, very low resistance. Um, welding wire works very good for your welder. You can go to a welding supply and you can pick up wire there and you can cut the cable. You're going to need a good pair of cutters and you can get ends that actually will solder on. You should use a solder on connection and you should 
solder all of your connections for your string and you should use heavy heavy cable way heavier than you th would think you would ever need when you open the hood on your car and look at that battery cable and you go wow that's some big stuff go twice as big at least <clears throat> the bigger the cable the better you're gonna spend some money there but you're gonna have a lot better chance of keeping your string alive over a long period of time it's going to make everything work equally together so the batteries that are connected to that are having the load pulled from them um, have the load being pulled equally out of each battery not just this battery doing you've got all your cables hooked down here and now you've got a lot of resistance between your cables here because you used very small gauge wire to hook this up and now this battery isn't getting worked nor nearly as hard as this battery because your appliances are all hooked up down here so that gives that to work as like one large battery so remember heavy cable solder your connections and some simple info and you'll be able to make yourself a battery string and if you don't have to buy all your parts new if you want to use used parts if you can find a whole bunch of used batteries from a truck shop or somewhere that's where I've gotten a lot of my batteries you can save some good money and you can get a good healthy string of batteries together that'll work and last for a long time and you'd be very happy with remember guys if you like this information go ahead and give me a thumbs up down at the bottom share this with your buddies and uh, if you want to see more videos like this remember to subscribe thanks have a good night Jack of all trades